my name is Ness Tilson. In this video, I'd like to present you the latest version of our Stair software, Stair Designer 7. Stair Designer has been completely rewritten from the ground up and we've added a host of new functions and commands. This new version is full of innovation that will make stair designing and building easier and faster than ever before. Here's a short video to show you just a few of the functions of this new version. When you open Stair Designer from the desktop, version 7 will actually show you this screen. You can choose what type of stair you want to actually start building. We have three options. One is a new multi-flight stair where we're going to build a stair flight by flight or a spiral stair or helicoidal stair or open an existing stair that you've already designed and have stored to your hard disk. For our example, let's open a new multi-flight stair. This new stair window now has three tabs. The first tab enables us to choose from a basic stair shape the type of stair we want to design. The second tab is the multi-flight stair tab where we can actually create flights as we go. So just by clicking on this plus button I can add flights to my stair and I can add as many flights as I want and they can go over passing one another and each flight has its own parameters. The helicoidal stair tab will allow me to start designing a spiral stair or a helicoidal stair. For our example, let's just open a model stair and use model number three, which is a U-turn stair. When I click on model number three, I have the default parameters for our U-turn stair. And these parameters I can modify as necessary. For instance, I can change the height. Let's put in two meters 90. We can make it turn right or left. Length of the first flight, let's put in from, for instance, one meter 50. The width of the first flight, let's put in 800. Length of the second flight, put it in two meters. And the width of that flight, put it at 800. And the last flight, leave it at two meters two. And let's put same width, 800 as the others. When I click on OK, Stair Designer will actually calculate the stair and set it up. On the right hand side of my screen, we have our properties window. And these are the properties, the current properties of our stair. And we can actually change the properties of the stair as we go. For instance, we can see here that the stair rule has a warning sign in front of it. And its value is at 640.71 millimeters. So it's probably over our 640 limit. The stair rule can be accessed from tools and control values. Here we can see the control values of our particular stair. If I put my stair rule up to 670 maximum value, the stair rule is now compliant. I can also change the other values directly in the properties window. I can change the number of steps and the height here. For the moment, let's leave this stair as it is. We can see this stair directly in 3D on clicking on the 3D button. Here, Stair Designer displays the stair in 3D mode. By default, Stair Designer only displays the steps and the risers. With Stair Designer 7, it's now possible to display on the same screen the 2D view and the 3D view of our stair. To do this, I'm just going to click right on the 3D tab and choose in the mouse menu, New Vertical Tab Group. Now we have on the left hand side of the screen, the plan view and on the right hand side, our 3D model. On the left hand side above the plan view, we have two sliders. These two sliders control the winding coefficient that determines which steps are winders. By putting the distant winding coefficient to its maximum level and then modifying the local coefficient, we can limit the winders more or less around the turning. Note that by moving the winders, the 3D model is automatically updated. Let's add a few other elements to our stair. First of all, let's add the strings. To do this, I put the mouse over the plan view, click right, and in the mouse menu, you choose add a string board. Let's add a string board on the left hand side by ticking the left hand side box and on the right hand side too by ticking the right hand side box. The parameters of the string board are actually here. For the time being let's just click OK and accept the standard string boards. Now let's add a few new posts to our stair. To add new posts, I do the same as for the string boards. I put the mouse over the 2D plan, click right, and choose Add New Post. I'm going to select the position of the new post that I want to add, and Stair Designer will show the default parameters for the new post, which I can now change if I need to. For the time being, let's just accept the default parameters and place a square 90 by 90 new post at the start of our stair. We can see that Stair Designer has drawn the new post in 2D and in 3D. Let's add other new posts to the inside of our stair and let's add also two new posts to the outside left hand side of our stair.
we can see that the new posts have been inserted and the position of the bottom of the new post has been calculated relative to each stringer. Supposing we want these new posts to rest on the floor. To do this, I can edit the stair directly in 3D. If I move the mouse over a new post, the new post outline becomes green and if I click, the new post becomes selected. Once selected, its parameters are shown on the right hand side in the properties menu. I can see here the section base height and the subsection from the floor has the value of 308 millimeters. If I set this value to zero, Stair Designer will set the bottom of the new post to the zero level. Let's change the other new post too. Let's also change the outer left new post, this one here. Now let's add some handrails to our stair. In the same way I put the mouse over the plan, click right, and in the menu I'm going to choose add a handrail. Let's tick the box right hand side to put a handrail on every flight on the right hand side. But on the left hand side, let's say that we only want a handrail along the first flight. So instead of ticking the left hand side box, I'm going to just tick flight 1. Clicking OK, Stair Designer will put in the handrails. Stair Designer allows us to work with style sheets that define every aspect of the way we're going to manufacture our stair. For instance, we have a material style sheet that defines the materials that the stair is being built with. I can change the style of the stair simply by applying another style sheet. On the right hand side, we have the properties of our stair and we have the material style sheet that is displayed here. For the moment, we have a default style. Imagine I want to change this stair for it to be in oak. I just click on the oak style sheet and the stair is actually changed to oak. Now let's say I want to change it into mahogany with oak steps and beach risers. It's also possible to modify our stair design by part type. For instance, if I want to change all the spindles or the banisters into round white banisters, I can actually go into the section that controls the handrail parameters. In the, ba in the subsection banister parameters, I can change the material and put it as painted white. And I can change the section from square to circular. And I can also change the diameter as necessary, say 20 millimeter diameter. It's also possible to change the style of each part by applying a global method. For instance, if I do not want risers on this stair, I can actually go into my step parameters and change the sub-method default style and take no risers. Stair Designer has actually taken away all the risers, so I now have an open plan stair. But maybe I want a riser just on the last step to hide the first floor joist. In which case I would simply select that step. And here in its parameters where it has no risers, I will just put one riser. I now have a riser only on the last step so that the first floor joist can be hidden. At any moment it's possible to modify the shape of our stairwell. For instance, imagine that we have a column in the top left hand corner of our stair where this new post is and we want to stop this new post in front of that column and make the strings go around that column. To do that I'm going to select in this drop down list to be working only on the stairwell parameters. I'm now going to select the wall string and divide it by clicking on it into three sections. I can now click on one of my points and move this new post forward. If I look in 3D all the changes are being updated automatically into 3D. Now let's take this string again and selecting its second point here drag it over so that it fits around our column. We can see now we've made a cutout where the the wall strings are actually moving around a column in the corner of our stair. Stair Designer has updated the plan and also updated the 3D and calculated the real shape of the different parts. In the same way, it's possible to move and adjust the position of every string in our stair. If I just click on this left-hand side stringer, I can see its reference point appear. I can cl simply click and drag and the stair will change its shape and be updated. It's also possible to give a curve to a string by clicking on its midpoint and pulling the string into an arc shape. We can see that the string and the handrail have been automatically updated in 3D and their real shape recalculated. 
Let's change this stair into a fully curved stair by replacing the new posts with curved stringers. To do this, I'm just going over the plan section, clicking right, and click add a joint. I'm going to add a curved joint to this section, and I'm going to do the same thing again for the adjacent curve. Stair Designer has now inserted curved strings and handrails on the half turn. Note that the strings and handrails shapes are calculated from the step positions. To get a more harmonious shape, I can just change the step positions by changing the winding coefficients. To give a more harmonious flow to the inner strings, it's also possible to change dynamically the curve of the straight sections. We can see from these examples that Stair Design is a very powerful Stair Design software and it's very easy to set up very complex stair designs. But one mustn't forget that Stair Designer is also a very efficient manufacturing program because as we are designing, Stair Designer is calculating and updating dynamically cutting lists, plans and CNC data. If we look at the actual data that Stair Designer is outputting, we can see that Stair Designer is actually calculating the plans of the stair, plans of each part with the dimensions as well as comprehensive cutting lists and giving the volume of materials its weight and price all dynamically updated as you design note that stair designer is also automatically creating DXF files for CNC manufacturing. So as you see, Stair Designer 7 is a very powerful bit of software for designing and manufacturing even the most complex of stairs. Thank you for watching this video. If you have any questions or need more information on our software, don't forget to visit our website, wooddesigner.org. Thank you very much. Goodbye.